Hey everybody, it's Byron Wilkins here of the Webcomic Alliance, and today I want to talk to you about Behance. Behance is a free online portfolio service provided by Adobe. It's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud services, and if you have a subscription to Creative Cloud, you will also get the pro site version of Behance for free. But today, I'm going to show you the free version that is available to anyone, regardless if you have a Creative Cloud subscription or not. The advantage of Behance is that it's totally free, and that's something we can all use. It also allows you to create an unlimited amount of projects. Plus, it acts like a social media site. You can look for other artists via a variety of search methods, including location, creative fields, or simple keywords. The great thing is, folks looking to hire you can search for you the same way. So let's take a look at Behance. Once you arrive at Behance.net, you need to log in. If you have an Adobe ID already, go ahead and enter it. If not, click Get an Adobe ID just under the login. It's free, so why not? What you see here is my portfolio on Behance. As you can see, I already have projects created. But let's talk about editing your profile first. Click the Edit Profile button. Here is where you will enter in all your basic information. Your occupation is yet another set of keywords people will be able to search for you with. So choose that carefully. Your profile allows you to enter in all your social media links. You can even put in your work experience and Behance will create a simple resume for you. The idea is Behance is trying to make it easier for your clients to hire you. So go ahead and fill in all the information you have on your resume. This is a great feature of Behance. Once you're done editing your information, you'll be back at your portfolio. The first thing we want to do is add a project. Do that by clicking the blue box at the top of the page. But as you can see, I already have projects created, and you may edit, clone, or even delete projects once created. But let's create your first project. Once you click the Add Work button, you have two options, Add Project or Add Work in Progress. The Work in Progress section is for rough sketches, concepts, just about anything that would not fit into a project. Another cool feature of Behance. But let's click on Add Project. The first thing you will be prompted to do is add images. I recommend you make your images larger than you normally would for the web. I recommend 1500 pixels wide for horizontal images and 1200 pixels tall for vertical images. Of course, all done at 72 dpi as you would for web images normally. By making the images larger, the Behance Portfolio application will size the images for you. And if Adobe can't size images correctly, no one can. Also, if potential clients want to download your samples, they'll be able to view the details easier. So to upload images, look for the folder on your computer with your sample images. You can see I'm uploading my commission images. The key here is Behance will not allow you to upload more than 20 images at a time. Your project may hold more than 20, but that's the upload limitation. I also recommend you keep your project shorter so potential clients may view your samples quicker and not have to scroll through hundreds of images at a time. The idea is quality, not quantity. So now you can see that my images have been uploaded. Now you want to give your project a title. Consider your project titles a headline of sorts. Keep it short and informative. Behance tracks how many characters are left, so be aware of that. Also be aware of search terms when creating your project titles. You want folks to find your work easily. Once created, you may add more images to your project. For example, if you wanted more than 20 images in your project. You may also embed media like animations or videos into your projects as well. You can even add in text descriptions of each sample. But I want to show you the features of the bottom section where you may customize your project. Here I inserted a red divider. I wanted to give my visitors a visual cue to separate each sample. It's pretty obvious normally, but it's nice to give visitors an easy way to distinguish each sample. Beneath the color selector, you see you may adjust the header height and the spacing between images. I like having a tad more space between my samples, so I increased that value. Then I chose to go with a warm gray background color. This allows the eye to see your images much easier in my opinion. A lot of newer software packages use a warm gray tone to help the user's eyes from being bombarded by all this stark white space on the screen. Now you will want to choose a cover image for your project. You'll remember that each project on my portfolio homepage had a thumbnail image. You may create a custom image, or what I did was use one of the images from the project itself. So I selected the Intelligent Life Commission that I did for David Reddick's new comic. Here you'll see that Behance then lets you crop the image. 
It's really easy to do this, and once you have the image cropped the way you want it, click Crop and Continue. Now you're at the final step, which is Settings. This is an important part of creating your project, so let's take a bit of time to cover this section. The first field is called Creative Fields. Once you click in that field, Behance displays a preset list of fields. This is very important as this will be one of the primary ways potential clients will find you. So Adobe has done their homework and provided you with a strong list of creative fields to choose from. You may only choose three for each project, so choose carefully. I chose cartooning, digital art, and drawing, as those three best describe not only the project, but a majority of my work. The next step is to enter in project tags. This is exactly like keywords for your website. You may use any tags you like in here, but you may not use the same terms you used in the Creative Fields section. Then, enter in a project description. Again, like in search engine optimization, use a short, clear sentence that describes the project. On the top right-hand side of settings is a great feature of Behance. If you've done work for a brand or major company, you're shown a list of popular brand and company names. This again helps potential clients find you. I find a great deal of my work comes from referrals from work I've already completed for another company. It gives your work some credibility. You may do the same with agencies or even for schools. Sometimes creative designers are looking for people from their alma mater as they know the programs and level of artists being graduated from that school. Under Tools Used, go ahead and list any and all tools you use to create your work. This lets potential clients know what software you know and work with. This again is a big selling point to many companies. Once the setting page is complete, go ahead and click Publish on the bottom right, and away you go. Now you'll see your project on your portfolio homepage. In my example, I use the exact same images for my commissions project, so I'll go ahead and delete this sample project. At the top right of each project thumbnail, you'll see an Edit, Clone, Unpublish, and Delete buttons. Clone is handy if you want to replicate the visual design of a project for another project. Simply add new images and settings and you'll have another project created in no time. Now I want to show you what your Behance portfolio looks like when you're not logged in. This is how most of your visitors will see the site. Notice that the 1977 The Comic Project is blocked out. I have set up the settings for this project as mature. My comic is rated PG-17 and this may not be what some of my potential clients are looking for. So this is a handy feature knowing that only people logged into Behance and who have their View Mature Material settings turned on will be able to see that project. I think this is a great option on Behance and a handy feature. And the last thing I wanted to show you is what the ProSite version of Behance looks like. I will be chatting about the ProSite setup in a future video, but I just wanted to give you a preview of what it looks like. ProSite is free to those of you with a Creative Cloud subscription. Or you may pay $99 a year to have ProSite available to you. Considering hosting, domain name registration charges, and design costs, that is actually not a bad deal. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.